any of you in this whole audience want to realize your dreams? Raise your hands. How many of you want to become who you aspire to be? You all got dreams, right? Napoleon once said, until you spread your wings, you will know how far or how high you can fly. Coming from a very patriarchal family where the girls were told, can't do this, you can't do this. Girls marry young. Girls don't have a career. Girls have kids at a young age. Girls don't own property. Now, all the things that I saw in my own house, my mother married young. She had four kids by the time she was 30. No property to her name, had the ancestral. She did not work. She was a loving mom. She was everything that everybody wanted. But she had no life of her own. For me, I felt education escalates you. Education takes you to heights where you have the ability to think. So I thought that something has to be done. Either I make my way or follow a path that is set. Talking about a story, I was 15, nearly 15, ninth standard, hot summer, sweltery. I came running from the school. And I came home just like all kids do and reach out for their mother, it was this, it was that. And this stopped in my tracks, and then I went into the living room and I saw two guests sitting there. There was a lady with a array of gifts, and in the corner, there was an older guy. Now at 14, 15, anybody is older than you, and looks older. Little did I know that this gentleman was 27. He had seen me play badminton with my friends and he had come with a proposal for marriage with his mother. I was aghast, I was surprised, I was shocked because my parents were part of this. So I decided then on, I was a very rebellious teenager, doesn't look like when I'm standing here looking so poised and calm. So I fought my way, everything was at rest. That's when I decided to step out of my comfort zone. Comfort makes you limited. We have to live in limitless, boundless, unstoppable life of our own. One life we have to do it the best way we can. Moving forward, it so happened in the summer, that very summer, I was at my maternal parents' grandparents' house. And I chanced upon a foreign magazine. In those days, even that was something very rare. My uncle, who was in the Virgin Navy, had left it. And I stumbled upon this advertisement with a very pretty girl, good skin, pearly white teeth, and I found the title at the bottom was British Airways and My purpose was made. That's what I wanted to do. So I would work with it. So this is the four things I did. Number one, I found my purpose. I started daydreaming. I would look at the sky. I would see the planes flying. They were very few and far in between. Not like now. And that's when I started visualizing how I was going to get there. There was no internet. 
It was snow or white. It was that old fashioned fall, and everything went with letters. You know, that postal stamps. But where there is a way, there is a way. My purpose was made, so that's when I decided this is what I'm going to be. But opportunity had to come for me to follow that path. In between the rebellion period, I went to work temporarily in Delhi from Jammu, but I came back to follow my college. Because in those days as well, I keep coming back to that, everything was very limited. You had to be a graduate to work, you had to be a graduate to become an air hostess, you had to be a graduate for a good job. So in the second year of my college in Tanazi, Sacred Heart Convent, I got this opportunity to go and interview four British Airs. Now, what happens is there were no schools. So there was a lot of inner struggle how to match up to the standards set by the airline, international airline. So they asked us to wear a sari and present ourselves. Everything well. English was good. Grooming was good. But my confidence was not half as good. Because confidence comes with meeting like-minded people, with reading, with writing, uh, with, you know, awareness and also with a deep vision. I say that to you. I got a regret letter. But I was not the one to give up. I tried after my graduation, once again, this time with Kathy. Kathy, again, body language was good, dress was good, language was also good, and it's overweight. Failed, again. Then I started working on myself more. More reading, giving a lot of emphasis on diet, and also the experience of working taught me many things. Another year later, I was not giving up. Another year later, there was opportunity to apply for three airlines. I applied for all three, Kathy. And I got through all three. Now, what does this say? Number one, don't give up. And visualize process was such that I had set myself up to be a winner, that I'm going to get it. I can and I will. And this is the mantra I've had in all my life since then. So here you can see me in Emirates Airline. I traveled the world. I joined World Canadian. Stayed with them for three years. I moved on to Emirates. And of course, my favorite, Akshay Kumar, was also on that. One of the flights. I've had so many opportunities to meet the kings, the queens, the presidents. The king of Jordan, I personally flew. So, if you think high, you visualize, you have a vision board for yourself. And this is what I would say. Have a vision board for yourself where you keep putting pins and pictures of everything that you strive to be. And step by step, move towards that. Find ways, find people who resonate with your thought process. I'd like to bring to your notice that all the goals that I had set in my life, I fulfilled one by one. At 26, I owned the property to my name. At 34, I went ahead and studied again because I believe that lifelong learning is what will get you anywhere you want. So I was a Emirates Line Air Crew, the first in the airline who completed her executive MBA while study. So people would take these trolleys 
and got different flights, I would have these trolleys filled with books to study. So there is no limit to what you can do with your life. I married at 35, motherhood at 38. Age is never a barrier to do what you want. And of course, everybody knows that I started mountaineering after that at 47. 47, I climbed my first peak with my husband at Kilimanjaro to fulfill his wish. It fulfilled mine as well. And a new vista opened. So, after coming back to Kilimanjaro, there was a point when my son was only eight years old and as a mother I was always apprehensive how to leave him behind. But I decided to do the seven summits. After Kilimanjaro came Mount Elbrus in Russia, then Winston. Now Winston is in Antarctica. So this picture was in 2013 when I was going to go to prepare in the court. So I went to Everest Space Camp for the first time and this picture is sitting uh, high above near 18,000 feet looking at Mount Everest. And that's where my dream was actually getting formulated because it's something I had set as a goal for five years hence. So this gave me and gave my purpose not only a visualization but the actual look at the mountain. I had gone to climb Island Peak which was a 6,000 meter peak. So a story about Island Peak which is in Nepal. We were four of us and I was the fourth. There was a guide, there was a sub guide and there was another climber. And it took me longer than the other three and I finally summoned it. So the fourth one was taking the picture and the three of us were here. So what does that show? That it's not only your physical ability, it is your mind which will take you to different places where you want to go. You can become what you aspire to be. There is no doubt that the possibilities are limitless. There is always something to learn even from the person next door to you. So after the island peak, I went and cried. And after that, it was the fourth week where I had a great injury. Oh, came that, climbed another week, my fifth week in South America, Mount Fosiesco, and then the time came for Mount Everest. 2017, I attempted Mount Everest for the first time. Now, I had already climbed nine peaks, including the training peaks that I had done around the world. I was 52 years old when I went to climb Mount Everest at 17. So, what happened eventually was spiritualism took over. I meditated in the morning. I read. I connected with people who helped me strive harder. I pushed my trainer to push me so hard that I literally used to cry in the gym. He used to say, ma'am, you must cry here and cry in the mountain because this is the place where we can take over. But mountains are not training grounds. So this is a uh, point in 2018 when I went and we were at the ridge and during the ridge your mind is so unsettled because you are exhausted. This is a point where on one side is a sharp drop to China and on 
the other side there is a sharp drop to Nepal. Somebody took this picture. I am in the middle here. I had two Sherpas that went with me. This is across uh, the south summit. And the winds had taken charge of the whole place. 70, se the, the miles of the winds were so harsh that I started on the summit, went back. And half of us who said mind over anything else is going to take over, we carried on. And one little slip can pass to anything. So we continued on this and of course History was made at 53, 7, 10 a.m. 2018 when I climbed Everest. We were talking of horizons. I could actually see the horizon from the top of the Everest. So many things happened during the time I summited Everest and sat for 25 minutes. Most astounding was that the inner calling comes within you to do something better than what you have done. So, some of you, I don't know how many of you will ever climb mountains, but over there, I did a few things, mentally calculating. Now, I have reached this pinnacle for reach. So, I decided to give back a lot to society. And this is what happens when you Accumulate knowledge. That knowledge is nothing unless you share it. That knowledge is nothing unless you use it. That knowledge is nothing unless you help somebody else with it. We as humans have got brains. We have to use it to full potential. So I went back. I did so many of the med meditation courses, help people, started an association for women to help them get jobs. You can do anything you want. You set your mind to. Your focus is you. Your focus is to keep going in spite of setbacks. It is not the end of the journey. Today, you are sitting here. Five years from now, you could be reaching your goal. So, start your morning with a little bit of gratitude that you are alive. Sit down and write your plan for the day. Follow the schedule, no matter how mundane it is. Focus on your goals, visualize and get to action. No point having a goal if you are just going to sit and wait for it to happen. It's not going to happen. What will happen is, step by step, you will reach your destination. And who knows, you might reach Everest of your own. You might reach Everest as, as this is. You cannot get comfortable in your skin. Think about it, like a seed. It's planted in the darkness. It's given manure, it's given water, it's given sunshine, it's given air. And the growth is happening, it's germinating, and suddenly it sprouts. And you all are that. You are at the brink of sprouting and reaching the pinnacle of success. And get your goals today. Write them down, reaffirm, and whatever you say inside in your mind will come true. So be careful of what you say inside because your inner thoughts will make you who you are. And you can become who you aspire to.